Check C, mate. Looking Jesus good. Jesus Christ. Specs. Look out, girls. So what are we doing? Fine. <laughs> <laughs> you would. You would. If you're looking to invest into solar, it's important that you get a reputable firm to carry out the install, not a bunch of cowboys. At Soulfuel, we believe that we install to a very high standard, and in this video, we're gonna show you the step-by-step -step stages of an install. Step one of any solar install is to ensure you're safe. So the main thing we've got here is obviously we've got a scaffold, we've got a beautiful hour at the top, Looking pretty in that sunshine. Any installers that come and try and do a job without any scaffold or access equipment, be a little bit wary of it, because you know if they're cutting corners there, what else are they gonna sort of cut on up on the roof potentially? As the homeowner, you also have a duty of care to ensure that any people on your property are working in a safe manner. So double careful on that. We've been to this site previously to carry out a survey, so we know what the roof is, you know the size, you know what we're doing, how many panels and whatnot. Um, if you're interested in what's sort of involved in the survey process, there'll be another video you can watch that'll probably pop up in the corner. And I'll pass you over to Al and he'll show exactly how he's putting these brackets in. We are using on this job today a click fit uh, mounting system. How this will work is these are screwed into the rafters. So what we use is a couple of long screws which will then go screw both into the rafter here as you can see i've cut out part of the slate here um, so we can actually have access to the bracket going onto the rafter once i've screwed these in we'll use one of these flashing kits here which will just go over the bracket like this going under these four tiles here and that just makes sure it's nice and watertight this is the reason why slates are my favorite to work on because they're a bit more involved, a bit more fiddly. Sometimes it takes a couple of tries, but we get there in the end. So as you can see, I've cut out on this slate here where obviously the bracket is. So we've got our bracket fixed down into the rafter, got our flashing kit. This is attempt one, hopefully. It's nice to me. Oh, look at that. We're in first time. That's it. One hit wonder me. Lovely. Are you there? I'm in here. Yeah? Oh, look at that, beautiful. First time that. Give me a shout when you make it to the the, uh, the loft space and I'll jump up and feed it up. Top fisherman. Ah, oh, top fisherman. So, stage one, I was on the roof, so he's cracking on up there. Stage two, if you like, is cable route from A to B. So this varies from job to job. As an installer, this tends to be the hardest part of a job because no one wants to see cables, it you know, needs to be concealed as much as possible and as best as possible. One of these cables is our, uh, our flex that goes up to the panels. Now, normally you can't have DC cable in the fabric of the building, it's not allowed. Uh, what you'd have to do is usually run it externally or surface. Um, on this job we're using N-phase, so now N-phase uses micro-inverters, so we don't actually have DC coming through the building. The micros convert the DC to AC at the panel which then allows us to run standard 230 volt through the house. So this can be concealed, it's nice and safe. These all go up to the loft space and they're gonna, pretty much all of them are gonna come back to our consuming unit that we're changing. That's gonna be under the stairs. So the cable is gonna come down this box in, gonna clip it nicely under the plinth, under the kitchen, which then allows us to get to our consuming unit location. Da -da 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 -da. Below here is that box in, so we've poked up here all the way through here, which then takes up into the loft, which allows us to get to our panels and the cylinder. We've got our solar cable that's up here, with a little bit of slack in it so we can tighten all nicely. So we'll clip up the rafters. Now it pokes over the lap, so we're not penetrating or ripping the membrane, which is quite important in my opinion. So we're sort of going over it, and Alex is the other side to grab the end of it. So this is the glamorous part of the job. Well, I'm laying on a dirty floor. My arm hairs are getting stuck to this nice, sticky, Tape. Love it. Pulley pulley. 
cables are now down from where they need to be. So they sort of, we've run them round. And I'm just gonna try and poke them through uh, the wall under here to get to where the consumer unit is. And then they're sort of all in position where they need to be. You're gonna stick in the bottom, straight in. <laughs> I'm gonna thumb it. <laughs> that's it, that's your look. Gotcha. Right, so that's the bulk of stage two done. Cable routes are in from A to B. Now, usually you wouldn't have this many cables from A to B. Um, this is purely because we're doing the heating controls as well for an air source heat pump that's being installed. So this is our solar cable. It goes up to the loft. We've got a supply to the air source, two five core flexes for comms from air source to controls. And then we've got our supply to a zappy that we've got going in with the comms for the zappy. And then we've also got a supply for the immersion heater that also goes up to the loft. So that's why we've got so many cables in this cupboard. Yes, once all the brackets are in um, and you're basically ready to mount what the panels actually go onto, what we've got here is the rail. This is actually the uh, a longer rail that the click fit range have. It's quite good really, because normally what you've got to do, you've got to put a coupler in them, like a rail connector, if they're the shorter rail. But as I say, this is one full length, so it gives it a bit, a bit more extra um, you know, rigidity. What happens is this part of the rail just literally hooks in like that, and then you just twist and then you hear a click. Then you've just got a little kind of, um, a little part here on the front, which you push it in, and then that just holds over the lip to kind of, it's kind of like a lock for it, just to ensure that it's, you know, not gonna go anywhere. So what we literally do, we just climb on top, simply like this, and then we're ready to put the rail onto the next row, and then, you know, onwards and upwards to the next two. Right, so now all the rails are on, um, everything's ready to go. The next step is just putting the micro inverters um, onto the rails. So what we do um, to be able to fix these onto the rail, uh, it's very simple. Just literally go through this hole here and that's it. Rob made this up um, a little while ago for us as well, which that cable that you just see poking out the roof connects into uh, this little whisker box here. Um, and then how these connect up and basically all string together. Literally this plug you've got, we've got eight microinverters and we've got eight of these plugs. So what happens, you literally just plug this here into this AC port. And then obviously we've got our next plug. What we'll do, that plug just goes straight into the next one there. And then they all string together in a nice circuit. As you can just see, I've peeled a sticker off here. Um, this sticker is actually very important. Um, because what each inverter has is his own, uh, you know, unique barcode. Um, what you then do, you'll log into the M phase app, which is obviously something that we'll do, um, where we scan each barcode and we have to make sure we've got the exact layout of where the micro inverters are. Um, so then what we can do, we can actually log into the app and then we can lay out what each, you know, where each uh, micro inverter is, which is going to be the exact same so you know which panel is performing at, you know, um, what percentage. What we're just doing is cable tying um, any loose cables to the rail, um, just to tidy it up so you can't see any panels, uh, sorry, any wires, um, of course, from the ground under the panels. And it just holds um, any connections and, as I say, the cable off of the roof, you know, when it's raining, um, just in case they get any wet or any water in them. On this one we've got JA Solar, they're 555 watt panels, they're in black. These ones do have the, the, the silver frame, because at the time when we ordered these, they didn't do a panel this large in black. Um, so this was the best compromise we could get. So we've gone for the larger panels because they kind of fill the roof space, so they're maximising the space that we've got to work with. And these are going to be paired with the new Enphase IQ8 HC microinverters, which are their sort of latest high power micro so hopefully we're generating as much as we can. So you've got a male connect MC4 connect here and you've got a female MC4 connect here. Um, I'll plug both of them into the micro inverter and that's how it goes through and then it strings through to the system and obviously into downstairs. Um, and then what we do, how we basically actually clamp the panels 
um, to the rail is this little uh, universal clamp here. It's very simple, clips over the rail, this little uh, silver part here, and then we just screw it down with a T30 bit, which are rather unique um, and you know, quite rare. Um, but we literally just screw that down and it clamps. We've got four in each corner basically, and it clamps it down nice and tight onto the rail. Anything I do is bang on. It's perfect. Oh, f off. <laughs> like Rambo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Here is a finished product. Um, as you can see, absolutely perfect. I'm very happy with it. The customer is very happy with it, which is most important. Um, just the final step, which is honestly my most favourite thing to do. Um, you know, I just can't wait for the end piece, putting this bird mesh on. Um, but this literally goes around the edges to stop um, any of the birds or, you know, ferrets or not ferrets, squirrels um, getting in and chewing any of the wires or birds nesting underneath the panels. So it just, you know, kind of secures the whole um, PV array. Uh, but yeah, just can't wait to get going with it. So I absolutely love it. George has nicely made us up some of these bird mesh clips because that's all he's good at. So what we do, we've, as you can see, just put a little bend um, in the mesh just to kind of shape it with the roof, obviously the height that the panel is coming off the roof um, and when they meet the tiles. So you kind of put 90 degree-ish bend uh, just to make it look nice and neat. And then this little hook here just literally lips over, you've got about a 20 mil lip in, in, on the underside of the panel um, where the frame is. So this little hook literally lips over it like that and you pull this little washer like so, and that's nice and tight onto the frame there. As you can see already, that's you know quite solid there. Um, and then literally go the whole way along, do two every panel, um, just to make sure it's not going to be flapping anywhere. But as I say, that's going to keep any rodents or birds out. The bulk of the install is now done. Let me show you around. We've got the finished product here. We've got eight JA Solar 550 watt panels. They're in black, uh, complete with the bird mesh all the way around to stop the little little birds and whatnot getting in there. Um, got 4.4 kilowatts peak panel power up here. Back on the ground, this customer's got four extra additions to the solar panels, one being a Zappi EV charger, two, an air source heat pump, three, Tesla power wall, four, retrofit underfloor heating. Hopefully this video has given you an insight on how an installation gets carried out. If you've got any further questions or you'd like a quote for a solar installation, please leave a comment below. Hello? Swing on? <laughs> How's it going?